two cents. We are God's remnant at God's Church of Love online, and we are reading from Psalms 37, verses 3 through 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Okay, I got to read nine. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, what comes to my mind right now, many of you, you make a doctor's appointment. You feel like there's something wrong, so you made a doctor's appointment, and you want the doctor to make an assessment as to what's going on in your body so that he can find a solution to your problem. Now, some of you, it may be pain, maybe a discomfort, a malfunction, whatever, but it concerns you enough to go to the doctor. So you go, you make the appointment, you go up to the desk, you sign in, you sit down, and you wait. Now, you may have to wait an hour. You may have to wait two or three, depending upon if it's a clinic or not. But the bottom line is, you're not going anywhere, are you? Because you have a concern, and you want the doctor to deal with it. So what God is trying to say to you is, if you can wait on a doctor who is flawed, imperfect, mm -hmm. hello, why can you not wait on him? God's not always going to answer your prayers or your desires or requests within an hour. He may not do it within three. Sometimes God is <clears throat> worse than a clinic. He may make you wait weeks, months, or even years. But let me tell you, all along the way, he's answering all along the way, he's meeting your needs to keep you encouraged to keep going. So don't get discouraged waiting for things to happen in your life. Know that God is your father and your father loves you, whereas the doctor gets paid for by you. He serves you, but he gets paid. God serves you and he does not get paid. Do you hear what I'm saying? He needs you to delight yourself in him. You need to embed yourself all in his heart, all in his ways, in his word, in his son, be empowered by the Holy Spirit because you can try to change yourself and you will always fall back on the old you. But when the Holy Spirit empowers you, it's a done deal. Now, it may take time to see the completion. But let me share this. Because some of you, you're waiting for your change to come, and you're wondering, is God taking a nap, or has he taken a vacation when your name came up on the list? So let me share this with you. Listen, and this is what came to me during the week, too. So, this is not about conversations that we recently had. Now, what I want to share with you is, uh, the Lord showed me something years ago. He showed me a picture of a, a wrecked car. This is a total wreck. Picture this in your mind. You're in a wrecking yard. It's pouring down rain. It's cloudy. It's dark. Help me, Lord. And while it's dark, 
And it's cloudy. It's daytime, but it's gloomy. The cars and the wrecks and the pieces and the parts are laying out all over the wrecking yard. And they're rusted. They're dented. They're smashed. They're, so the glass is broken. The doors are broken off. The hoods are lopsided. The tires are flat. These cars are a hopeless wreck. It's a mountain of wreckage. Somebody walks onto that yard and says, I want to see what you got. And they walk through the yard. They're looking for something specific, the same way God did when he was looking for you. Think about it. He's looking for something specific, for a classic. He says, I want to refurbish a car, make it like brand new. I'm going to do the work myself. And when I get through, it's going to be a masterpiece. So he goes through the, the wreckage. And there's a little car sitting off in the back in the corner in the dark. That nobody else looks at because it's a lost cause. So he looks at that car. And... He decides that's the one I want. And the guy who's who's who sells the he's I mean, I got newer cars that are in better shape because he's trying to make more money. That's a piece of junk. He's not gonna make much off of that. So he's trying to show him these other cars. He said, no, I want that one. He said, Man, that's worthless. But I want it. I want it. You may not want it. You may see it as worthless. But I see the diamond in the rough. I want that one. So they haul it up and he hoist, they hoist it up and land it down on whatever kind of truck or vehicle he has to take it home in. And he carries that baby home. And he gets in his big garage and he gets all his tools out and his hydraulics and everything. And oh, he starts working. He makes orders, makes calls. I need this replaced. I need this model for this year, make and model, blah, 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 blah. They get the new engine, the new transmission, the new tires, the new doors, the new windows. I mean, the thing is a mess. Been wet inside and out. He's got to pull the chairs out. I mean, it is a mess. That car was so damaged. There's no hope for the car when you look at it in the natural. No hope. Oh, it would be a fortune to get that thing fixed. It would be probably more practical to buy a luxury car brand new than it would to put all that money into that. Why? Because you'd have to pay the mechanics. But see, this guy knows how to do the work himself. Now, that car is sitting there feeling hopeless. I'm liking it to a human being. I know you get it. So listen. While God is working on that old beat up car. While God is working on beat up old you. And that man is working on that car. <laughs> Within a couple of months, it may take him months to get some things done. And then it may take him a few more months to get some. He's not in a hurry. It's his car. He's not going to throw it away because it's not finished. He's the one doing the work. Hello, the car can't do it for itself. So what happens? He buys parts. He orders this, orders that. Some things he has to wait for a month or two for a part to come in from wherever. But the bottom line, it may take him a year, two years, three years. Where is the car? The car's right there in his garage, isn't it? Hasn't gone anywhere. He hasn't called the tow man to take it back to the wrecking yard, has he? He hasn't given up the ghost on himself. Forget you. You're taking too long. No. Why? Because he saw the finished product when he first looked at that car. When he saw the wreckage, he saw the prize. And when he saw the prize, he sat down and counted the cost and said, it's worth the work I'm about to invest in this thing. So when he started it, he who begins a good work in you 
Or as the word says, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it. And that man worked on that car and works on it and works on it. And one day, the garage door is shut and he's done the paint and the polish and the top coat and gotten all the windows and the doors and the locks replaced. Everything is done now. Tires are on. Car, he starts it up and mm, hums like a kitten. And what does he do? He opens the garage door up. And he drives out in this magnificent, beautiful, priceless treasure that he recreated on his own. Now, you know what I love about God? After he recreates you, after he does the polishing and the pulling out the debts and pulling all that old crap from inside, and it replaces it with the new carpets and the new leather seats. And he polishes up and he puts the new lining in the dashboards. And everything is new. Buys a new steering wheel even. Guess what? The car is not carrying any of the old junk around with it. Because it is a new thing. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, that car was in an R become new state for years while that man worked on it, wasn't it? And his neighbors were looking at him like, what is that fool thinking? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. What's he gonna do with that crap? And that car has been seen as a piece of junk for uh, over decades because it was sitting in that wrecking yard. But guess what? He saw. He saw the priceless treasure in that bad boy. He saw the value. God sees the value in you. God sees what he created from the beginning. Even if you may have gone through so much that you got dents and cracks and broken off doors and flat tires and your interior is moldy and, and torn and, and ripped and, and half disconnected and disjointed and you're all messed up inside and you don't know who you are. God knows who you were from the beginning. And he knows who you are before you get to who you're going to be. Don't you lose heart. You have to believe because God knows what he's doing with you. He knows why you were born. He didn't pull you out here to pull a joke on you. Psych. No, he's not playing that kind of game. God doesn't play. He may have a sense of humor. That's where we get ours from. But he doesn't play. Not when it comes to the important stuff. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse 1. We'll see where the Lord takes me. Now, faith, and that's what you have to have in order to wait. Even to wait on the doctor's appointment. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, that's the it, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Thank you, Lord. This is the other 
one that came to my mind this morning. Wow. Okay. Must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel so much better now. Okay. Now, Noah, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned one world, excuse me, condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now listen to this. How long did it take that bad boy to, to be built? Over a hundred years, wasn't it? Some ridiculous amount of time. Imagine a person working on a car three or four years and the neighbors are laughing at him till he drives that bad boy out for the world to see. And imagine how the world looked at him. This man is crazy. What the heck is rain anyway? Rain? What is rain? We don't have anything called rain. But it didn't stop what he did from being legitimate. And it didn't stop him from working on it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Think about that. So while God is working on you, you work on you. You work on that attitude. Self-control. You work on your relationship with him. Diligently seek him. Until you make that connection that makes him real to you. You diligently seek him for your healing. Till he gets all the old mold and the rips and the tears out and all the old upholstery and all those old running wounds that won't be healed and won't be comforted because you don't know how to get healing. You can't get it through a pill. You can't get it through a bottle. You can't get it through a lover. You can't get it through a hubby or a wife. You can't get it through your kids. You can't get it through money, through stuff. You can only get healing and inner satisfaction from God. Now, you can treat him as a Santa Claus and a bellhop all you want. But that stuff, stuff comes, stuff goes. But God's got all that inner substance you really need. He's got all that love you've been searching for all your life. He's got it. That's what you need to pursue him for. You need to pursue him for a made up mind that is screwed on straight. Not on your shoulders backwards while you're walking forward. You don't want to moonwalk through life. Many people do because they don't realize how much they need God. Okay, so my question to you is, will thou be made whole? Will thou be healed? Will thou be rebuilt? God said we will rebuild the waste places, the former desolations. How are we going to do that? Working with him. We start at home. Then we work our way out. No matter what condition you find yourself in, no matter what shortcomings, what weaknesses, what has happened to you in your past, what so-and-so said to you last week, I don't care what put downs you have had to endure. They mean nothing in comparison to what God has spoken into your life. They mean nothing. But unfortunately, some of us put more faith in the old dead things that Satan has used to torment us with. Some of us put more more store, more emphasis on the things we fear. Fear nothing but God, baby. Even the devil can't pull you down unless you hold his hand and let him. 
That's why the Bible says he seeks whom he may devour. Not who he will. He can't do what he will. He's got to get permission. And then he's got to get permission from God. Then he's got to get permission from you. Think about that. You can hate yourself, hate your life, hate your situation, go down a, a downward spiral of self-destruction all you want. But that's not God's doing, baby. And all of the consequences you suffer from doing those self-destruct choices, that's on you, not on God, not even on Satan. So trust in God, no matter what. I don't care if it looks hopeless, if it looks like you're about to be put out, if it looks like you're going to be fired, if it looks like you're going to lose your home and it's going to go into foreclosure, if it looks like everybody's turning their back on you and everybody's angry at you for something. Trust God. Life happens, you guys. Things get lost. Things get stolen. Things get taken. Other people get credit for what you have done. Man may not put a check mark next to your name, but God, he stores up everything you've done. He does not forget the good things you have done throughout your life. That goes totally unnoticed. You may live in a within us the center of an unthankful generation, thankless and ungrateful, selfish and self-centered. No matter what, God knows what you've done that you've done well, and He also knows what you have failed in. But this is what I love about God: He is a Father. And he understands why some of you fail, where you fail. He understands where I fail and why I fail. But he knows that I am pursuing righteousness in the midst of my failure. So I don't make excuses and say, well, I can go on out and sin. No, my failures are shortcomings. They're not sending things out there where I'm doing dirt and I'm doing wrong and I'm screwing around and I'm, you know, whatever. I'm not doing any of that. Uh, uh, thank God, not now by the grace of God, because all God has to do is lift his Holy Spirit and Dum Dum will be right back out there playing a fool. But God loved me enough to keep me. And he loves you enough to keep you. You are never a lost cause. Those that call on him, he says he will in no wise cast out. Even if you're falling in the middle of your fall, call. In the middle of your failure, call. Call on him. He's just a prayer away. Okay, here we go. It's going to be a cappella. It's don't consider it a solo. Just listen to the words. I didn't warm up or nothing, so just listen to the words. Don't be weary. Don't be dismayed. God's going to wipe off. All your tears away. Listen, whatever's going on in your life, whatever frustrates you, whatever ties you up in knots, know that God is in control. Know that God is in control. The devil is not in control of you. God is. You just get your can of spray and say, I rebuke you, Shh, die. In the name of Jesus, Shh, die. Get out of my life. I bind you Shh, in the name of Jesus. I cast you yeah. out in the name of Jesus. Take authority. God gave you everything you need to prosper. 
everything you need to be victorious, everything you need to be the head and not the tail, everything you need. Life doesn't have a, a thing over you. You have dominion, baby. That's what God gave us. He gave us dominion. No little funky tail, nobody on your job or in your house has dominion over you. Only God does. Uh, he sets things in order and there's a cooperative way that we are to comply. But we are not to be browbeaten and treated as a doormat. Okay, now, letting you know how much God thinks about you. Sometimes you have to go to God when everything in your life points the finger at you, 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 you. You're nothing, you're nobody, you're a failure, you're worthless, 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 you're a waste, waste, waste. You have to go to this word. Say, Lord, Lord. <laughs> What do you say about me, Lord? Please talk to me, Lord. Everybody treats me like I'm just a big mess up. Oh, Lord, what do you say about me, Father? I need you to tell me what you think about me, Lord. I need you to tell me that, that I'm worthy of your love or something, Lord, because it just feels like a waste of time when everybody treats me like I'm just a big mess up. I'm a big screw up. So everything's wrong with me. Yeah, sometimes you got to go to God. Just like a big old baby with your feelings hurt, needing a Band-Aid on your cut because somebody just cut you to the core. God is our Father. He is there to fix what other people break in us. He's there to heal it, mend it, put it back together. The potter wants to put you back together again. Psalms 115. <laughs> not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for the mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? But our God is in the heaven, in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. Their idols are silver, gold, and work of man's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes, and they have, they, eyes have they, but they hear not. And it goes on and on to talk about how they can't do anything for themselves. But it says here in verse 8, They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. Mm. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. That does not just mean stuff, baby. He will make you a bigger and better person as you grow and you develop in him, in his love. Ah, okay. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord. You're not cursed. You're blessed. Hmm. I don't care how long you've been in that wrecking yard. You're blessed because God's got his eyes on you. Mm, mm, mm. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any to go down to silence, but we will bless the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Listen, you have a loving father. You don't have a deadbeat dad. 
And I'm not talking about on this earth. I'm talking about in heaven. We're talking about our Father which art in heaven. The master creator. He created you with all kind of good stuff in mind. And even though life, circumstances, and people have made a wreckage out of you, look what God can do when you place it in the master's hand. You will be somebody you never thought you could be. <laughs> anyway, I hope that encourages you. It's not a long message, I know. But I do hope it encourages you. Always think of yourself as that car in the back in the corner in the dark on a rainy day, all rusted and jacked up. And all that God wants to do in your life. The pot of wants to put you back together again. So you have to come as you are. Don't fake it. Don't play it. Don't play religion. Don't act like you got it all together and you don't need any help. That's a lie from the pit. Long as you lie to yourself, you will undermine all that God wants to do for you, through you, and around you. And, and in you. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful not to allow those lies that come from pride to undermine the blessings God has for you. Now, where is the mouse? What you guys do with the mouse? Here it is. Okay. You guys can open up your mics. And we are ready for chat. Don't go anywhere. Give me a second. <laughs> 